Today we're going to be taking a look at some great budget lens options that can still produce an amazing image and can be adapted to just about any modern mirrorless camera on the market. We're talking vintage lenses, so let's check it out. Both cameras and lenses these days can be very expensive, and so I'm always looking for ways to be able to save money without compromising on image quality. And I'm always looking for those unique lenses that just kind of fit my style and give me that more cinematic look that I'm, I'm always trying to achieve with my gear. So today, I'm gonna show you guys my vintage lens collection, and I'm gonna give you guys the reasons why I think you should be using vintage lenses as well. So these are part of my ever-growing vintage lens collection because I have definitely fallen in love with vintage lenses but these here are Canon FD lenses now most vintage lenses were made for 35 millimeter full frame cameras and so these lenses were part of that era of Canon FD's lineup and so these lenses were produced for quite some time they were produced all the way from the early 70s into the mid 80s so there are tons of them out there that brings me to my first point of why I think you guys should be using vintage lenses as well. First of all, it's the price. These things are extremely budget friendly because they are everywhere. You can find them on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, OfferUp, yard sales, Goodwill stores. I mean, relatives have them stored away in their closet. These things are so readily available, they are really cheap. So like this lens right here, for instance, this is a 28 millimeter f2.8. I got this lens for about $25 on eBay, and that was with shipping and everything. f2.8 is a pretty fast lens, and 28 millimeter is a pretty good focal length, and it's a very, very nice lens. This lens right here was $75. This is a 135 millimeter f2.5 lens. This lens right here, this is a 50 millimeter f1.8. I paid about $45 for this lens. So f1.8 at 50 millimeters is a pretty expensive lens when it comes to modern mirrorless cameras, but you can pick one up for about $40, $45. Uh, these two lenses right here were actually gifted to me. This is a 200 millimeter f4 and you can pick this up for like 15 16 bucks um, This lens right here is a 35 to 70 millimeter f 3.5 It's not the fastest, but this lens is actually pretty sharp so you can build yourself a whole cinema kit you know, you can get a 24 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, an 85, a 100 millimeter, all pretty fast lenses, you know, 2.8 or under, and you can get a whole set like that for five, six hundred dollars. So a lot cheaper than what the average mirrorless lens costs today, at least a professional one, you can get a whole setup of cinema lenses in vintage class. And so definitely price is my first uh, selling point to you guys to go give vintage lenses a try. The second reason why I think you should give vintage lenses a try is because they can be adapted to just about any camera that you have. So this right here is a Micro Four Thirds camera. This one is my G7. And so I have that uh, 28 millimeter adapted onto this camera and it's just using a simple little $10, $15 adapter. And you can get these for multiple different mounts. Like right here I have the L mount version for my Panasonic S1. So if any of you guys follow the L mount system, you know that there's not a whole lot of lenses available out there, although there's more coming out, but still there's not a lot of options out there. And so with a simple $10, $15 adapter, you can try a whole bunch of these different vintage lenses. But then that also gives me the ability to be able to use the same lens on multiple different cameras. So if I like the look of this lens, I can use this on any 
camera that I have because it's adaptable to be able to fit on that new uh, you know, mount. The third reason why I think you should give vintage lenses a try is the image quality. Like I said in the beginning of this video, you know, I'm all about saving money, but I definitely don't want to compromise on the image quality uh, because that's at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. It doesn't matter what the gear looks like or whatever, it's what the image comes out like. Well, I feel that, that the image quality that these lenses produce is amazing. Um, you know, these lenses, especially for their age, perform very well. Like this lens right here is like 43 years old. This one's like 42. This one's like 41 years old. And uh, these are like 30 something years old. But yet they still produce a very nice, sharp image. And, but they're not perfectly sharp. You know, you're not gonna have that edge-to-edge -edge sharpness like you do with today's modern mirrorless lenses, but in some ways, that's a good thing. You know, some people don't like the perfection of today's modern mirrorless lenses because they're almost too perfect. You know, there's no character to them. Uh, people's faces, you see every little imperfection and stuff like that. People will go out and they'll spend a few hundred dollars to get Promis filters and stuff just to soften up the image and give it that more filmic look that everybody's going for. Well, these lenses kind of have that built in. They're sharp, like I said, especially if you're using 4K or 6K, but yet they have that overall softness to them. And they have characteristics that other lenses don't have. Some of the coatings that were used on the, the glass on these lenses, they couldn't use today even if they wanted to just because of some of the chemicals and stuff that were used back then. But they, you know, the color renditions that come out of them, the contrast levels that come out of them, the amount of lens flares and the type of lens flares that you get out of these lenses is just gorgeous in my opinion. And I think the image quality is also very important because in today's uh, film world, you're looking for something that's gonna help you stand out and this is one way to do that. Again, these are FD lenses, but there are lots of different vintage lenses out there that even I wanna try uh, just because you get different unique looks out of them. The fourth reason why I think you should give vintage lenses a try is the build quality. You know, these uh, right here, like this one and this one are made out of plastic. Um, even though these are, you know, 30 something years old, they're not made out of the same type of plastic that you get today. These are very rugged style plastic and they have held up over time. But I kind of lean more towards these older vintage lenses like the 40 plus year old and these are solid metal I mean look at this lens it is built very very ruggedly everything on here except for like the lens caps and and a uh, few little pieces on the on the back there are actually I take that back that's metal too so the lens caps are plastic uh, but everything else on this is made out of metal and it is built very very well um, I mean they even have things like I mean, that's a metal built-in lens hood. The focus rings are just very, very smooth. They have hard stops and starts to them because these are completely manual lenses. There are no autofocus or electronics at all in these lenses. They have aperture rings on them. To get lenses these days that have aperture rings, you have to spend a lot of money. That's, that's a luxury where that was a standard when these lenses came out. And so they're just built to hold up. I mean, this lens is 40 something years old and it still looks like brand new. It's, it's held up over the test of time. And there are also services out there. I mean, you can take these apart and de-click them on your own pretty easily. So if you're doing manual transitions from uh, day scenes to night scenes or vice versa, you can use that. Um, there are services that will de-click them and turn them into complete cinema lenses with focus gears and aperture gears and all that stuff and make this into a nice cinema lens or cinema lens set, like I said earlier, for fairly cheap. So the build quality of these is just superb. I mean, the, you've got a very, very nice lens here that's gonna hold up through some heavy work. The fifth reason why I think you should give vintage lenses a try is as a learning tool. You can pick up a bunch of these lenses and be able to learn which focal lengths you actually like, and you may not necessarily be able to do that with today's modern mirrorless lenses because they're so expensive. It's hard to go out and spend the money on an expensive lens if you don't even know if that's a focal length that you like. You know, I had a lens that I purchased, uh, I, it sat on the shelf for like over a year. I paid like almost $800 for that lens. 
lens, I used it all of like three times and I found out I didn't like that focal length. But with these lenses, because they're so cheap, you can buy so many of them, you can see which ones you like and which ones you don't like. You can see what apertures you like and, and which ones you need the most and things like that. Another way that I think these are a great educational tool is because they're completely manual. You're forced into learning how to manually focus for things. You're for forced into learning how to actually control the aperture and things like that. You know, that's intimidating to a lot of people. A lot of people these days are kind of stuck on using autofocus and stuff like that. And, and autofocus is great. It's come a long way and it has its place and it has its purpose. But there are also times where you don't want to use autofocus. You know, I would not trust autofocus on a paid gig, at least not for video work, because I don't want to take the risk of it hunting for focus and then, you know, I've ruined my shot. But with these, you learn how to manually focus and you learn to fill the lens. And it's really not as hard as what a lot of people think it is. And so being able to learn that craft is only going to make you a better filmmaker or photographer. And being able to learn how to control your aperture and things like that is only going to help you grow in your craft. And then also by being able to pick up a bunch of prime lenses and things like that, you can see you know, um, what the different focal lengths do, how they look, how they compress the image and things like that. So I think that they are a great educational tool. There are links down in the description below where you guys can find some of these lenses and uh, learn a little bit more about the Canon FD lineup. If I can find some of the articles that I, I reference to, I will leave links for those as well so you can learn how the FD glass lineup works. Again, there's lots of different ones to try, but I just really like these. And um, also, if you have any kind of questions or comments, just let me know down in the comment section. Stay tuned because I have a bunch of videos in the works. I'm actually very behind on videos. It's been like over a month since I put any out because I've been working on a pretty big project. Uh, but stay tuned because I have a lot of videos coming out. And so that's pretty much it for today's video. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.